Hi, this is Eric Bond, the founder of Beat the GMAT. I wanted to let you know that today's session is brought to you by ClearAdmit and Beat the GMAT. If you like what you see today, please check out the new MBA admissions course we built together called Navigating the MBA Admissions Process. This is a complete course on how to get into business school from start to finish. It's a course that I wish that I had when I applied, and I think that you're going to love it. You can learn more by going to udemy.com slash business dash school. Thanks. Welcome to the Write Like an Expert series. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the MIT Sloan School of Management's essay topics for the 2011 and 2012 admission cycle. Before we do that, I thought I should tell you a little bit about my background. My name is Graham Richmond, and I'm the co-founder of Clear Admit. I've been in the MBA admission space for over 15 years and have worked first as an admissions officer at the Wharton School and most recently with Clear Admit, where we've been guiding candidates through the MBA admissions process for over 10 years now. Um, we help applicants sort of navigate the process, brainstorm their essay topics, review them, uh, select recommenders, decide on target schools, uh, prepare for interviews, really every aspect of the admissions process um, we help our clients with. Um, and so today we're going to look at the Sloan application. And, you know, as you can see, here are their essays for this coming cycle. Um, Sloan is somewhat unique in that in addition to three essays, which are more traditional, I would say, um, they have a very non-traditional assignment in their cover letter. And that's the kind of opening piece for your application. And we're going to talk about the cover letter as well as the three essays in an attempt to kind of demystify these questions and give you some insight into how to best approach the application at Sloan. Um, obviously, you know, again, the cover letter is sort of the, the wild card here in that it's an unusual assignment for MBA applicants to tackle. So we'll talk about that first. Um, so let me just sort of uh, go over with you the exact instructions that Sloan is providing you with here. Um, so they say, prepare a cover letter of up to 500 words seeking a place in the MIT Sloan MBA program. Describe your accomplishments and include an example of how you had an impact on a group or organization. Your letter should conform to standard business correspondence and be addressed to Mr. Rod Garcia, Director of MBA Admissions. So in terms of uh, background on this and kind of where this question comes from, uh, I can actually recall a discussion that I had with Rod Garcia um, oh, more than 10 years ago in which he likened the MBA admissions process to the recruiting process for a job. And he pointed out that you know, on some levels, their goal as admissions officers is to bring in a talented uh, group of students who are going to contribute to life at Sloan, but who also uh, will be employable on the other side of the program, right? So who will graduate with jobs. And, and so in his mind, having a cover letter is a great sort of um, way to gauge your ability uh, when it comes to kind of presenting yourself to an employer. So he definitely um, views this as a great exercise and a great way to sort of measure that in the applicant pool. Um, I think that on some levels, the temptation when you first see this question is to say, oh, this is just a career goals, kind of why MBA, why school X uh, sort of question, but it's put into a different format in the cover letter. And so I can just, you know, grab the essay I wrote for another school that is about my career plans and desire to, to seek the MBA and slot that right in, um, put Dear Rod Garcia at the top, sign it at the bottom, and voila. Okay, and, and that's a, you know, it's obviously very tempting to do that, um, but I would really discourage you um, from taking that approach. I think that you will be able to reuse some content. I mean, certainly uh, in so much as you've already written essays that kind of uh, walk the reader through your background and your skills and attributes um, and explain your desire uh, to pursue an MBA, you know, yes, some of that content will fit in here. Um, but I think you'll find that it's best to um, kind of give this essay a clean slate uh, or this letter a, a clean slate. Um, it's probably the best way to go. Again, you might be able to reuse some content, but I will say that the committee, uh, the admissions committee over at Sloan are pretty good at spotting a, uh, a cover letter that's really just a career goals essay, essay, you know, masquerading as a cover letter. So be careful about that. Um, the other thing I would say is that you know, think of this in terms of the cover letter and, and if you were applying for a job. I mean, obviously there's some standard themes that go into a cover letter, such as, you know, a description of your background, uh, some elaboration on your attributes and skills. Um, and then, you know, typically a cover letter would have a section about why you're interested in joining the company 
In this case, you know, the company is MIT Sloan, and the position is uh, a position in their uh, in their class, right? So think of it in those terms, and also don't forget, you know, what you could contribute. Again, when you're writing a cover letter, often you might point out some of the things that you think you could uh, contribute to life in that company, or in this case, life in the MBA program at Sloan. So remember that. Um, the other thing I would say is that there is a a lot to cover um, in this letter and that can be challenging. You only have 500 words and they've, they've asked you for quite a bit. In fact, the thing that often trips applicants up is their call for a specific example of how you had an impact on a group or organization. Because in many respects, that's kind of its own essay topic or you know separate sort of subject uh, on its own for a lot of other programs. So uh, my advice is, in terms of where you're going to weave that uh, impact experience in, it's probably going to come in the sort of earlier portion of this uh, cover letter where you might be sort of talking about your background and you could use this impact experience as sort of a nice anecdote to flesh out that background and sort of showcase something that you've done. So again, uh, this is a daunting assignment. I would say alongside Stanford's What Matters to You Most and Why, uh, this is one of those essays that really um, is a curveball for applicants. And they, um, you know, m most candidates are trudging along with their applications for schools that have early October deadlines. And they turn to the Sloan application in, in mid or late October when it's due. And they're sort of um, uncomfortable with this type of uh, assignment. So just keep that in mind. It, it's not the end of the world. A lot of people struggle with it. But if you get into the mind mindset of viewing the position in the MBA program as sort of um, similar to applying for a job, um, you'll be off to a really good start. So beyond this cover letter, uh, Sloan has three essay questions that they require you to answer. And I thought it'd be helpful to kind of go over the instructions um, for those questions because they are somewhat unique. I did describe them earlier in this presentation as being sort of standard essays, but there is a bit of a twist in that they're behavioral questions that the Sloan uh, committee is asking. So let's look at these instructions and kind of uh, talk through that as well. So the first thing they say is, we are interested in learning more about you and how you work, think, and act. For each essay, please provide a brief overview of the situation, followed by a detailed description of your response. Please limit the experiences you discuss in the three essays below to those which have occurred in the past three years. And then they say, in each of the essays, Please describe in detail what you thought, felt, said, and did. Okay, and that's your cue that this is a behavioral set of essay questions. Um, there are several things to talk about here, though, uh, with regards to these instructions. Okay, the first is that Sloan considers your past behavior to be the best predictor of your future behavior. Um, that's what makes this kind of a behavioral question, right? They're trying to get some insight into how you interact with others. Um, how you handle specific situations, how you think, um, how you act, um, you know, how you feel um, in certain situations. And so that's important, and they, they want that kind of information in these essays, and it would be wrong to kind of just um, write a kind of standard MBA essay in which you share an anecdote and pat yourself on the back a bunch without really um, unpacking the process um, that you went through um, in the situation. So keep that in mind. Another thing I would say is, because these are behavioral questions, you probably want to pick examples that sort of show you at your best. Um, you don't want to pick uh, examples that show you as uh, backstabbing or conniving or, you know, traits that may be sort of negative behavioral traits to have. Um, so keep that in mind. Pick stories that showcase you at your best. Uh, adhere to the past three years guideline, if at all possible. So you notice here they're asking you to use stories from the last three years. And for many of you, that means really only from your professional uh, kind of experience, and I don't mean, um, you know, that you can't use personal stories, but I mean your life post-university, okay? So, uh, you know, there will be some of you who are younger uh, candidates who perhaps, um, you know, your senior year in college falls in this three-year uh, band, but for many of you, um, we're really talking about kind of your life since college. So keep that in mind. And, you know, in terms of the rationale, I, I do get a lot of questions about this. Uh, you know, a lot of candidates come to me and say, you know what, Graham, I really want to use a story that happened when I was um, in high school or college, and it was really formative, but it's from five, six, or seven years ago. And, you know, my advice is there could be exceptions to this rule, but generally, for most candidates, you really want to follow their guideline. And, you know, the, the rationale that MIT has here is that they are interested in getting to know uh, your behaviors and kind of who you are today. And they're worried that if you use an anecdote, 
from your early college years or even high school or childhood, that that may not give them too much insight into the candidate that you are today. So keep that in mind. Um, the last thing I would say is, you know, don't underestimate this idea that they're asking for how you, you know, how you thought, um, how you felt, what you said, and what you did. Um, I think, you know, when you draft your essays, you should be looking back at them and kind of making sure that those kinds of, um, that, that angle is in there um, in each response because they really are looking to understand your behavior. So let's look at the first essay. Um, the first question that they have in the set is, please describe a time when you went beyond what was defined, expected, established, or popular. And you have 500 words here. It's about a page. I mean, that's, that's also another guideline they give you is r roughly a page. Um, so I think that this essay provides a great opportunity to showcase your confidence and your creativity. Okay, um, they're looking for examples where, you know, you sort of broke from the pack, broke with tradition, explored kind of new channels, uh, or saw a problem in kind of a different light or from a different angle than others in your organization. And, you know, I, I would say an ideal kind of outcome for this essay would be, uh, you know, reaching some new insight or perspective, creating a new process, or establishing a new procedure, right? So definitely... Um, getting, you know, getting at the heart of sort of this, uh, you know, time that you went beyond what was expected or defined or, or popular, et cetera. So um, showcasing some sort of positive outcome. And I think that, um, you know, it's important to outline the process that you went through. As I've uh, said earlier, you know, what were you thinking? Uh, how did you express your ideas? What did you feel as others kind of came back to you with their thoughts? And then, you know, what did you do in the end? And so that's really important. But I also think it's helpful to demonstrate, you know, any kind of positive impact. So it's not just a question of outlining the process you went through, but ideally at the end of the essay, you are sharing a little bit of information about the results too. And, you know, one thing I should say for all three of these essays that we're talking about here is that it can be useful uh, to use the CAR method and the CAR method, CAR is an acronym, uh, and it stands for Context, Actions, Results. Um, that can be a nice sort of framework to use as you sort of draft and organize um, your discussion for these essays. So don't forget that. Um, there's another method called the STAR method as well, which is Situation, Task, Actions, Results. Again, another fun acronym um, that you can use as well. And, you know, again, these are uh, sort of frameworks that people typically use when responding to behavioral questions, whether in an MBA uh, admissions interview or for this type of an essay. So keep that in mind. So again, that's the first question. Let's move on to question two. And the question there is, please describe a time when you convinced an individual or group to accept one of your ideas. And again, this one's 500 words, about a page or so. So this prompt um, sort of centers on one's ability to persuade others uh, to build support for an idea and kind of persist in the face of potential resistance, right? So um, this is a great way for the committee to gain insight into your ability to kind of um, pitch an idea and be persuasive, uh, negotiate, um, all those great sort of soft skills and behavioral uh, patterns that they're interested in, in gaining insight into. Um, so another thing I would say, um, you know, I, I think this is a, a, obviously a tremendous opportunity to demonstrate leadership and vision, um, because here you are uh, showcasing a time when you had to kind of get people to follow you, in essence, right? Get people on board with your ideas. Um, I think that it's also a nice opportunity to showcase problem-solving skills, because by nature, if you're coming up with a time um, that you convince people of, of an idea you had, you've probably, um, you know, used your kind of problem-solving ability to arrive at the idea in the first place. So keep that in mind. I guess another thing to consider is, you know, the implications of your idea for the group or the organization. So kind of what did you feel was at stake and how did your, um, you know, kind of new idea here or, you know, kind of powers of persuasion lead to some kind of impact or change in the organization? Um, I also think that it's important to attend to the interpersonal element. I mean, this is really the crux of any behavioral question. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're talking about a time when you had to persuade others uh, to accept an idea, you could take the easy path and sort of just showcase, you know, you came up with this great idea, um, you went and presented to the board or to your boss or, you know, to your entire team, and, you know, everything went smoothly. Your idea was so terrific that once you threw it up into a PowerPoint presentation and 
um, put it in front of them. Everyone was sort of falling at their feet, um, falling at your feet, uh, you know, kind of accepting the idea. But I actually think that it might be more interesting to think very thoroughly about the experience and showcase um, some of the aspects where you got feedback um, on the idea and you were receptive to it and maybe incorporated others' input or concerns in order to um, persuade and, and push this idea forward. So keep that in mind as well because this shouldn't just be kind of a slam dunk type story. Ideally you're getting at the interpersonal side of it, you know, how you were, um, what you sort of thought, felt, said, did, you know, the, all this stuff about um, you know, how people approached you, how you, you know, that you were receptive um, and that you uh, you know, kind of thought through the ideas that they were giving you as you sort of tried to um, persuade and push ahead um, your plans here. So keep that in mind. That's the second essay. And, you know, one thing actually as a sidebar here that people often uh, talk with me about when they're approaching these essays is the fact that the questions seem almost interchangeable. You know, I, I often get candidates who say, well, you know, gosh, you know, I could talk about a time I went beyond what was defined, uh, expected, established, or popular, um, but that's similar to, you know, describing a time when I had to kind of convince an individual or a group to accept an idea I had. So there are similarities often, and, and many of these questions are kind of interchangeable in that you might have a set of anecdotes where you're not sure which one fits best with which essay. And I think that, um, you know, that's a challenge you'll face. And I, I think that, you know, just um, mapping these out and getting them down on paper is often a great way to see where they fit. And I have worked with candidates who present me with their three essays, and we end up actually bouncing them around. Um, you know, we don't necessarily jettison any of the type, the the sort of topics that they've come up with, but we find that they fit um, better in uh, one question versus the other. So don't worry if you feel like, gosh, you know, I could use this story for any of the three um, questions that they're asking. Um, the main thing is with any application, um, you know, you want to sort of strive for balance, right? So um, think of all the stories you have to tell that might fit the bill here and try to achieve balance so that the three stories are not all about work you've done for the same organization or you know the same project or something right you want to give them some variety and some exposure to the different facets of your candidacy whether it's um, community service extracurricular activity um, in some cases if you're younger uh, academic experiences and obviously professional experiences now I will say that many of these prompts just do lend themselves to kind of professional experience and that that's probably your go-to uh, bucket as you start sort of brainstorming here. Um, but again, balance is great and so perhaps one of the three is going to not be about a kind of recent uh, work experience and, and instead would be about something you've done um, outside the domain of your professional career. So, uh, you know, getting back on topic here, let's talk about the third essay um, in this set. Uh, the question here is, please describe a time when you had to make a decision without having all the information you needed. And again, 500 words here. So this essay focuses on the applicant's decision-making process and instincts uh, when navigating ambiguity, right? So how do you um, handle a, a situation where you don't have all the information and yet are forced to kind of push ahead and make a decision? And this is um, obviously very important in business school and, and beyond, right? Because in business school, you are going to be given uh, case studies. You're going to be given projects where um, you have bits and pieces of relevant data um, and perhaps, you know, some insight into a problem or a, a, a challenge that an organization is facing. And you're going to be required as homework to sort of figure out what the next step is. And obviously many of you do this in your in your work today and you know the business world is filled with ambiguity and there, there aren't always um, you know kind of certainties. So this is important. They're trying to understand how you think through a problem, how you use the information you have and how you kind of fill in gaps and, and you know maybe engage with others to try to fill in those gaps. Um, so again uh, focusing on the applicant's decision-making process, um, this essay I think uh, requires that you sort of explain uh, some context here. So what was sort of the task at hand, um, you know, and again using the car or the star uh, method is fine here, but definitely getting into what was the situation, uh, what, what's the context, and what information was missing, um, you know, because they're asking you uh, directly to kind of delve into that exact type of scenario. So tell them what was missing and maybe even why that information was missing, what made it challenging. Um, for you to kind of uh, gather the data that you needed or the facts that you needed. Um, so I would say um, good behavior to exhibit here would be 
the fact that you uh, did a lot of uh, consultation with others and you know attempts to track the information down so that you're open to working with others to find um, you know solutions and fill in knowledge gaps okay and I think um, walking the reader through your reasoning process as well as your feelings so it, it's perfectly fine um, to indicate that you had a hunch as to how you might go about this um, and that you were feeling nervous about taking that leap or you're feeling nervous about um, you know kind of some of the gaps that were there um, so showing them that you've actually uh, you know, had these feelings and, and gone through the process and arrived at a, at a solution. And, you know, I would say, keep in mind as well that the goal here is really just to demonstrate sound judgment and your ability to kind of handle ambiguity and to seek out knowledge and, and fill in gaps, but um, make those leaps of faith as needed. It's not actually about arriving at the optimal decision, right? So it could be that, you know, you worked on something and there were gaps and you had to kind of go with your um, instincts and, and, you know, interview others to try to arrive at a solution and that, you know, perhaps that solution wasn't the optimal one in the end, but there was a great process of kind of using your judgment and dealing with ambiguity and that's really what you want to showcase here. So don't worry if um, this story isn't kind of a, a rah, rah, rah outcome. You know, maybe you uh, had to fill in the gaps and you got it slightly wrong. That's not the end of the world, okay? Again, it's all about the thought process and your ability to kind of demonstrate sound judgment. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, in conclusion, I would say, you know, all three of these essays are, are challenging, um, mostly because the questions are somewhat open-ended, and yet they are asking you for very uh, sort of specific anecdotes in which you demonstrate what you thought, felt, said, and did. So there's a lot to kind of cram in in 500 words. There's a lot of ambiguity to deal with um, because the questions are a little bit more open-ended than some and um, because they overlap, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of the types of experience that might fit with each question. Um, but again, I think the good news here is that between the cover letter and these three behavioral essay questions, you have a fair amount of room to stretch out. I mean, you really will be able to give the Sloan uh, Admissions Committee some good insight into not only the experiences you've had, but kind of who you are and how you behave, what kind of a person you are and what kind of a member of their community you might be. Um, so again, uh, you know, I like this set of essays. I think that it allows you to stretch out as do um, many of the other schools' essays, but I, I think this is um, a nice set. It is daunting because of the different approach um, with regards to behavioral questions and the, and the curveball that is the cover letter. Uh, but I think if you follow my advice here, you'll be in good shape. Um, as we kind of wrap this session up and you head off to work diligently on those Sloan essays, I wanted to remind you of a few different resources that Clear Admit has at your disposal. So the first is obviously one-on-one -on -one, uh, admissions consulting. And if you're interested in working with, uh, with Clear Admit or working with me on your, on your Sloan uh, applications, you can reach out to us, uh, send us your resume, um, get in touch, call our offices, um, and we will set up a free session where you can have a 30-minute chat with one of our admissions counselors who will kind of talk with you about your MBA application strategy and engage your profile and give you some feedback on where you fall in the applicant pool. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention is this great uh, course that uh, Beat the GMAT and Clear Admit have built uh, together um, and it's called Navigating the MBA Admissions Process and there are uh, 10 lessons in the course that you can take online. It's uh, well over three hours worth of instruction um, and it's $99, so you can um, head over to the, the website and check that out. There are a lot of free previews that you can look at, and this is a really important course because it explains to you kind of how MBA admissions works and how you need to market yourself in this process. It's just something that I, I really wish I had had uh, when I applied to business school, and we're really pleased to launch that with Beat the GMAT. Uh, another thing that Clear Admit offers are a set of publications. So uh, I guess most relevant to this discussion are the MIT Sloan School Guide that we publish, and that is a uh, kind of everything you ever would need to know about MIT Sloan Guide. Um, it's a an ebook that you can download on our website. We also publish an MIT Sloan Interview Guide in case you're fortunate enough to be interviewed. So check that out as well. Um, it has sample questions, explains how their behavioral interview process works, and so forth. And then finally, uh, our admissions community on our website. We have a very active um, blog and provide lots of free content on our site, um, you know, breakdowns of the essay topics, news about new professors being hired, uh, and anything really that you might need to know as an applicant targeting the top MBA programs. So please check that out as well. 
And, you know, I just want to wish everyone the best of luck as you approach your MIT Sloan applications. I hope that you write like an expert and end up with an acceptance letter at the end of the road. If you liked today's Write Like an Expert session, please be sure to visit udemy.com slash business dash school and check out our course, Navigating the MBA Admissions Process. Take a look at the free preview at the top of this page. This is a complete MBA admissions course featuring former admissions officers just like the speaker you saw in today's session. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you again.